Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about actually a home lab setup. And so, you know, we talk about deploying Big IP in data centers and, you know, uh, in cloud environments. But what about if you want to do personal development on your own machine? And so we're going to cover uh, actually my, the way that I have Big IP set up in my uh, VMware Fusion environment. And of course, you can use like VirtualBox or, or other uh, hypervisors. I happen to use VMware Fusion. If you're on a Windows platform, you can use uh, VMware's workstation and, you know, the networking will, you know, carry over to those other uh, hypervisors as well. But if we kind of outline my entire system here, and so this is my, my host. I have a Wi-Fi NIC and I have my RJ45 and so I can connect to either a bridge, spell that right, yep, okay, or NAT and so if I'm bridging I can actually connect and let me put my big IP in here, okay, and so I have the big IP, I have a NAT network, I have a bridge network, um, connected to my host, I have two other networks, um, and it's the VMNet 2 and 3 in Fusion. It's called other things and other hypervisors, but essentially these are NICs, virtual NICs in the VMware Fusion environment that I bind to my host. And then I have other ones as well. I have four, five, six, and seven. And so these are all the potential networks that I can connect my host to or I can connect a, a virtual machine to. Um, in this case, Bridge and NAT are, are both connected. This one's, um, you know, there's some networking that happens here that will connect to either the RJ45 or there. And then, I, of course, I have, um, yeah. And, and so if I connect my big IP to my bridge network, that will allow me from other machines. So say I have a, you know, another development box or my router out to the cloud, you know, I can connect that way uh, through the bridge network. And then of course I can, uh, so I can get an IP address on this network so that I can connect from my internal network over or even an external network if I allowed permissions in, into my big IP or I can connect into this NAT network and then I can pretty much allow it to connect out to the network but I'm not going to allow anything into my big IP. So if I didn't want to, if I didn't have any need for anything out here to come to the big IP and I'm going to do all that development locally, at least the big IP itself through the NAT network can connect out and do uh, licensing and updates and that kind of thing. And so the other two networks that I have my, my big IP connected to that I can from my host get to, um, you know, I'll connect those directly from the big IP to VMNet 2 and VMNet 3. And then based on those, I might have a Ubuntu server here. Um, let me just, a mix. And then, so there, and then bring that over as well. And so uh, I can have this on VLAN 2 and, and I set mine up to where this is my external and this is my internal network. And so, you know, I, I might run some test suites and this is from my browser within the host, but you know, I'll connect my browser stuff here and then it hits through Big IP and then we'll come to the, um, uh, we'll come to my Ubuntu and then uh, and then if it needs to go reach out uh, to like a SQL server or whatever it can come back through this other network and then uh, and then come back through. I like to have my Ubuntu uh, devices connected from my host so I can get to them directly so I'll have an interface on on these network on both networks but the the like kind of the packet flow for for this particular vice, and I, I don't think, I, yeah, I should have connected them both here, so. 
So each of these is connected to both networks. And then I have a, you know, SNAT auto map. SNAT auto map will make sure everything flows correctly. But these, these networks are kind of fully connected. So big IP is connected to all of that. And then I have other networks that I use for other things. The, these particular boxes might be web servers. I do have a TACX server sitting on one of these, so I do all of my remote authentication testing on one of these two. But then I have other networks available to me, and you know I can connect to these. I don't use four and five very often, but if, I, if I'm gonna test the, um, that ASM shopping cart application, I have that connected to, uh, to that network. So it's kind of isolated and doesn't mess with my other stuff. And uh, especially things like that that I download off the web and I haven't done a, like a code analysis of what it actually does. Um, that way it's completely isolated from my host and it's also not allowed to route outbound so that it's kind of isolated in its own little area. And then of course, everything through V5. So kind of if I am going to circle all of this, all of this is route domain zero. And if I'm going to do any other testing with route domains, I save these two networks for that. So I can send v6 and v7 up to big IP. And this will be route domain one, and this is route domain two. And in that way, I have some availability uh, in other route domains that I can do testing between a, a child route domain and a parent uh, route domain. And so I may stand up another individual um, independent Ubuntu server, or I might have, um, uh, I might drop an interface onto that box for, for that particular testing. Um, the big IPs themselves, I actually have four of them. And so I don't run them all at the same time because I only have so much memory on my Mac, but each one is uh, two CPU and I put seven and a half gig on it so that I can run all modules if I need to. But I also have uh, the different versions I run is 11.54, 11.61, 12.0, and uh, 12.1. And those particular images I'm running because uh, for uh, eye control testing, I'm, I'm working on supporting the, the eye control rest of F5 common Python library development. I'm uh, contributing to that. And so when I do my testing for any code I write for that, I have to run against those uh, four versions. So I have all four. And uh, VMware Fusion has the ability to, from the command line, I can just do VM run and I can quickly start and stop my, uh, my images. And so it's, uh, it's easy to go from module to module uh, to do that testing. And so that's, uh, that's pretty much my home lab in a nutshell. Hope you've enjoyed this, and we'll see you out there in the community.